Paul Pierre Broca was born in Santa Fe, La Grande on June 28, 1824, and he died on July 9, 1880, in Paris. He accomplished a basic education in Santa Fe, La Grande, and at his local university, he studied both mathematics and physical science. At the young age of 17, he attended medical school in Paris, graduating at the early age of 20. He received the degree of doctor in medicine in 1849. He is most remembered for his contribution to the understanding of the brain. His research began with the study of brain lesions. Brain lesions refer to any type of abnormal tissue in or around the brain tissue. His study of brain lesions allowed him to discover the area of the brain connected to speech. It is now called the Broca's area. His studies also contributed to the understanding of aphasia, and through his thorough study of aphasic patients and their brains after death, he provided the first proof of the localization of brain function. Aphasia is defined as a person or people who are unable to speak or form coherent speech. Broca found that his patients were able to fully understand what he was saying, but it was difficult to impossible for them to respond, and they had difficulty forming sentences and couldn't string words together to express a coherent thought. Broca's area is the area in the frontal lobe of the human brain, specifically located on the left side of our frontal lobe, that helps with the motion needed to produce speech in a human. Broca's area has transformed the way we now understand speech production, language processing, and the way we comprehend things. Broca's very first patient was a man by the name of Louis Victor Laborn, nicknamed Tan, since that was the only word that he could properly pronounce. Broca first met Laborn in 1861. He saw that Laborn had no trouble understanding what people were saying, but had difficulty forming words and sentences, therefore making it tough for him to produce speech. After Laborn's death, Broca wanted to further investigate the problem that he had and so he performed an autopsy on his brain. Broca found that the cause of Laborn's problem was coming from the left frontal lobe of his brain, where he found there to be a lesion in that specific area. For Broca to make a concrete conclusion to his theory, he continued to work on the study for a few years, and over that time, found 12 other patients who experienced the same problems as Laborn, which allowed Broca to come to the conclusion of what is now known as Broca's aphasia. Here is a little video to show you a person that has been affected by Broca's aphasia. So what's your name? Um, Scott. Oh, no. Sarah Scott. That's right. And how old are you? Um, I can't. Try. I can't. You're 19. 19. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened to you? Um, stroke, um, school, and English class. Okay. And I, um, book, and I read it aloud. Um, but I can't because stroke. And what happened after the stroke with your speech? Well, I I can't. What do you do now? Every day. Oh, um. Speech, then, um, the speech therapy. Yeah. Okay. And um, <coughs> also riding. Um, riding what? Oh. Um, horses. Yeah. Good. And how do you feel? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> You're fine. That's good. When Broca's patient died after 21 years, Broca preserved the patient's brain in alcohol and deposited it into an anatomical museum in Paris to be displayed. Preservation and display of specimen played an important role in the absence of neuroimaging techniques for further comparisons and studies on speech disorders and localization of the brain functions. Psychologists aim to understand the relationship between the brain and behavior. Broca was one of the pioneers to localize the brain functions. Contemporary neuroimaging techniques have confirmed Broca's findings, which are still used in neuropsychology, cognitive neuroscience, and speech-language pathology. <laughs>